Hello, hello everyone, hello and welcome to the couch creation video for the upcoming Rose of the Free Kings 11 Let's Play series. I am the Black Shadow, joined by co-commentator Alonzo Ryan. Hello there, welcome. And uh, yes, yeah, so um, uh, we don't know necessarily if we've told you yet if we're doing this series ahead of time or not, so we'll have recorded this in advance, but if you haven't, we're doing this series very soon. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> Basically. <laughs> um, and so, uh, as part of this, um, for those on my channel, perhaps have done previous like XCOM series, bits and pieces like that. Um, I This is a game that does feature the ability to create characters for the game, and we are going to be imploring for all of you, if you so wish, to join in with that uh, for the game. Uh, the character creation process isn't too bad. I've seen significantly worse. Um, if you, Whether you want to do it via the YouTube comments uh, below, or if you want to do it via the thread that is going to be open on Discord, which there's a link of that in the description below. Um, there should be a template uh, that you can use if you so wish um, to help with uh, putting in your various bits of data. Um, if you don't wish to do that and just want to give us a general overview for what sort of character you would like in the game, you, we can do that as well, although you don't get to complain of what turns up uh, once we start the series. That is not allowed. So uh, just a warning, but uh, you can do it either way. We're not too worried. So character creation for the game. Let's delve into it. So we're going to create officer, and we figured the best way to do this is to, well, basically create my own characters I'm using for this game uh, for, you know, as we're doing this. Um, all characters as that are going to be created uh, will be basically dumped, I'll just show you here, on the main game here. Uh, so we're going to be playing uh, a scenario here, uh, there's a whole variety of scenarios here, and if we're doing like this one for example, uh, all created officers will be deposited randomly onto the map as free officers that are available for hire. Um, so we have no control of where people are going to go to initiate, we don't know, um, and basically the, the only way that we have physical control of your character is that if we manage to recruit them for our own particular force, otherwise they will be AI controlled for potentially quite a large portion of the game. So how you decide to set up your character is pretty, pretty damn important. Yeah, there is a very low chance that we'll end up getting them ourselves, but there is a possibility. Well, we're going to come across a few, either in our own force or beating the shit out of us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> probably probably beat the shit out of us so we're going to go and create ourselves an officer here so here we go we're going to make manual that's the best thing for it uh, there are only three things to worry about um, the ability settings is probably the most important one but we'll go through all the options here uh, so you can see so we'll start off with your actual character uh, you have your name here um, now it should be noted that um, I think Charlie and also beyond that uh, names basically work kind of backwards uh, so if I wanted to be Black Shadow and I wanted it to read Black Shadow I'd have to type it in this way now, bear in mind, obviously, that means technically my name is Shadow Black, but if you want to read as Black Shadow, you kind of got to do it this way. It's it's the rules, because, I don't know, it just is the rules. Um, you, you have to, um, your name can only be a maximum of 12 characters combined, which is mm -hmm. a little unfortunate. Um, and you do have to have something in each field, so I can't just say, like, um, have black shadow here it, it doesn't let me it's not allowed so you've got to have something there to work out but you're only allowed up to 12 characters which is unfortunate but that's just kind of how it is so there you go um so we're gonna have my own character which is going to be for those who've seen our dice warriors 4 series from way back liang yu uh, he's going to be male uh you can have female as well it does affect a couple of options at the back end of this we'll go through those in a moment um and then we get to probably the longest bits of this video which is going to be faces the portrait for your character um there are 11 pages of beautifully detailed um pictures and beautiful considering this game is 15 years old it's pretty fucking impressive some of these it is, um, yeah. Now, we are going to have to run these as first come, first served, uh, because, the, again, it's basically then we can run this. So what we will do is the following. Uh, if you like a particular page portrait you want for your character, uh, give us a page number, which will be obvious, and then give us a portrait number. So we'll do it as in, like, portrait one, number two, number three, number four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way down to 16 down here. Mm -hmm. uh, and that we should be able to identify who you so wish. Um, it would be a good idea to also give us a backup portrait or two, if you so wish, because we have to first come first serve portraits. We don't really want 10 people with the same portraits. It's it's like, it's bloody confusing <laughs> to put things, it's really confusing. Um, so it's bad if you've got like created officers in like um, in some of the scenarios um, that have got some of these pictures, it's confusing enough. Um, so we'll go for all these portraits so you can see them. Um, and again, some of these look really, really good considering, say, this game is 15 years old. Um, and some of these portraits were made before this game even came out. Uh, some of these have come from, like, previous RTKs, I believe, you, you were saying. 
That's absolutely right, yeah. Um, I played the sixth game, which I think would have been released around about 1995. I can't really remember, but um, yeah, uh, that, that actually contains some of these portraits that are in this game. They have carried them through. This guy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you've got a whole range here. So you've got obviously from your sort of elder sort of warriors, you've got some more sort of uh, politically diplomatic sort of people. Uh, of course, you can have these as you want. Uh, this picture is probably going to be banned because Mr. CM3 has demanded I give him this picture on pain of death. So you're kind of not really allowed that one. Or you might have to fight him to the death for it, which would be amusing. Um, uh. You've then got your sort of like younger warriors here. Um, ignore the ones that have already got names to them of other random uh, officers I've made over the years. Um, yeah, this was uh, your saved data from how many years back, you said? Uh, a lot of years. I, I like this. I think I first played this game at least 10 years ago. And some of these officers have kind of come over the over the course of time. Some of them, some people might even recognize this if somehow, if they've seen like Dance Warriors 4 stuff, like uh, the evil guards. Um, they actually, I made them for this. And quite a lot of these characters are actually are characters I ended up making in Dance Warriors 5 Extreme Legends, actually. Uh, that's the portrait I'm going to be using right there, but I'll go through the rest. Um, so, yeah, so they all had their old, old backgrounds, like Yu Shang was like an officer under Zhang Liao. You got Gao Meng, who was, um, who kind of was uh, just a, a native villager defending against the Yellow Turbans, ended up joining Wei and stuff like that. Um, there's some later on uh, later as well, bits and pieces like that. They've just kind of been formed over the course of time, um, you know, which is, you know, how these things tend to go. And it's, it's kind of nice. It, the world building gets to do is pretty cool. Got something out of the more mystical warriors. That's quite a uh, quite a usually quite desirable picture. That one right there. Quite a lot of people tend to like that one. I can uh, understand. Looks really... a little bit sort of uh, uh, maybe sort of off coast Chinese to some degree. Yeah, you know what the you know a rebel without a cause sort of thing. But there are <laughs> there are some really good pictures. Some of the uh, the pictures of like, the females as well are like incredibly detailed. But again, fifteen years old. This game. It's pretty damn yeah. good. Um, but yeah, I'm surprisingly well on new systems. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you say this, uh, considering some old games don't play too well, especially on Windows 10. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably one of the one of the better ones going around. And then you're like, uh, that man's obviously up to something. Clearly, you've got mm. Zhuge Liang, but like the the beta version, <laughs> like cheap man Zhuge, and not even Pang Tong. You've got Sly. A word I wasn't going to say on public. He looks like he has just stepped in something. He's even stepped in something, or he's just like, right. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your males there. And then you've got your female character portraits will go through as well. Again, the same sort of thing. Starts with like the uh, the warriors, and then there's sort of like more politicians. But some of these look, you know, are pretty damn impressive, you know. It's, it's good to see. I mean, let's say someone had an absolute field day before making this game, like, all right, time to make some fucking kick ass portraits. Hmm. Um, you can uh, you can actually kind of differentiate between which ones were made for what game as well based on the sort of design of them. Mm. Like, uh, for example, the ones for the older games have like these kind of white outlines around them and stuff like that. So, really, I've never I've never really looked in heavy detail at these. Well, you can tell these were ones that were all recently made, maybe even for this game. Perhaps they only added female characters for this game if you get me because uh, if you look at them they're very heavily detailed in comparison to some of the other ones some of the seen. male ones are a bit rough around the edges like maybe yeah exactly. like, like this one maybe is oh yeah to... yeah that one must have been made like that a couple of games just... back yeah a couple of others but you know you would say a game 15 years old and like some of these pictures are even older than that mm -hmm. um you know and some of them you know, they still hold up i think nowadays they're very very good but yeah. you know Koei have always had really good artwork for rtk games always absolutely yeah uh, so nearly at the end of these the ones there. There's the one I used for the Shinkai because she's not actually in this game for some reason, so I made her. Um, Save for Wang Yuanji, she wasn't in this game either, um, so I made her as well. That's a very good question, actually. Uh, Zinkai not being in the game, wasn't she a fictional character, actually? Made Maybe, but there's stories? loads of fictional characters already in this game, um, mm. so it didn't matter. Shui Jiang was another one of my 5XL officers. Uh, she ended up um, serving Liu Bei, actually. Oh, no, 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 of course, I'm an idiot. Um, no. Zinkai was Lu Shan's wife, wasn't she? Yeah, uh, one of one of several. But <laughs> I, it, it's hard to tell sometimes who was or wasn't fictional. Or it, it, I suppose at the end of the day, it doesn't matter too much, but um, it's it's little things, I suppose, those of us that have played these games shitloads, try and keep tabs on so we can like 
like feel like we're we're intelligent people. We're, <laughs> we're really, really probably not. Uh, so nearly the end of these, and then we're actually going with the main characters again. This is just the longest bit, showing off, you know, like a hundred odd page portraits. In fact, about oh, two hundred lot of portraits. Good stuff, right? So there's all your portraits. So again, you can have any one of those you want. Um, but do give a backup or two, please. It would be much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Anyways, this is what we're using here. Awesome dude here. I do like him. Um, I will um, sort out a model for you based upon who you choose. Um, I'll go through the creators. And I always can go through the historical ones as well. Because some of these are, like, unique. So, like, there. Like, you on the out. Then get versions, like, with hats, without hats, and whatever else. Like, this guy here is, like, a military helmet and, like, civil clothes. Which you physically can't get otherwise. So, I'll go through these and I'll find whether it works best for the character you choose. Because I'm a nice man. Because oh. I'm a nice man. <laughs> right. Now to more important stuff. Uh, so, um, the year, birth years and death years. So, um, our scenario we'll be playing Imperial Rescue begins at year 196. Um, now, I believe you enter the game at, at age 15, is it? That's right, yep. At age 15. However, um, when you're born in this game, you're one year old. Because... I uh, know you just you just are you're born one year old in this game. So I think um, that's an Asian thing again, actually. Really? Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, it, it is it. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. I think in Taiwan at least it is, but um, and India. I'm thinking about it, but I'm not entirely sure about China. I mean, given that this tries to be as close to what China is like, I would assume that is the case. If you catch me. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Right, anyway, so, um, so if you want your character to be in the game at the game start, you'll need to set your birth year at no later than 100, the year 181. That's right. Uh, which means that, yeah, ignore these here. So 194 plus 2, 196, you'll be 15 years, and you will be in the game at the character start. You can have your character um, born early if you want, so they're older in game. You can have them born even later, so they appear... Later on in the game, though, you probably don't want to do this because we don't know how long necessarily the game's going to go on for. Yeah. Um, but it would probably make sense to make sure you get characters in. So I probably wouldn't say any later, really, than 181. Um, but you can if you so wish. But if you want to set yours like about 160, 170, that's probably about right. That's what most characters are in this game uh, for the scenario mm -hmm. we'll be playing. Uh, I've got my character down as I don't remember. So I'm going to ignore that and... Oh, I need to choose something, actually. <laughs> we'll just go with... Um, 170. 176. We'll go 176. Yeah. I think that'll actually be right. Um, and then your lifespan um, is... Well, how do you want to explain this? <laughs> I'll leave this to you. This <laughs> well, I have managed to uh, encourage the use of RNG here. So... Uh, we set a lower limit of, I think it was, was it, well, I, I suppose it's going to have to work around about that, oh, it actually tells you there, that's that's useful, okay. Yeah. So, because the scenario starts at 196, we said that the earliest time you could potentially die is 206. Yes. So, working with that, following that, we, well, we're going to basically RNG it to when your character will die. <laughs> Yes. So Going all the way up until the, well, the max in game, which yeah, is 99 The maximum years. possible age. So your birth year will have some heft on that, obviously, given yes. that, you know, it will allow you to live longer if you do put yourself younger, if you catch what I mean by that. Mm. Um, but but considering, yeah. yeah, considering that basically most uh, ages in this game. People tend to live to about like their mid 60s or so, and considering that you can go all the way up to 99, you're probably going to be better off. But uh, it's something that should be noted um, and will be affected. But yeah, you will no one will be able to naturally die for at least 10 years after the game starts, minimum, yeah. which is a fair amount of time. To be fair, a lot can happen in 10 years. A shitload can happen in 10 years. So we'll say yeah. RNG 54, which I would be, I'd be alright with that. How many turns is there in a year again? Uh, there are what's three times 12. Three 36. times twelve. That's yeah. 36. Thirty-six. So in ten right. years, that's three hundred and sixty turns. It's quite a lot of turns, folks. It's quite a lot of turns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um. So that's that. Uh. You're not. There'll be no no father, no mother, no spouse, no close friend, no sworn siblings. All kind of complicated. But uh, you will be able to have liked and disliked officers if you so desire. You can have up to five of each. Um. This does have some impact in game. Uh. If you have particular officers that you like. Um. You know, 
tend to get on with them better. Um, it means that if you're, say, like a free officer, or they're a free officer, um, it's a bit easier to recruit them with said character, because you know them. Um, if a said officer happens to be um, a fall through the like, say, I don't know, um, where the hell is he? I've gone to... So, so. Like Sao Sao, for example, of course, is a force ruler. You're going to be more likely to join his forces overall, but it's hardly a cast iron guarantee. But, you know, it generally helps, uh, the principle of that. Also, if you are partnered into a unit with someone that you like, it will actually help um, increase the effectiveness of said unit as well, which is a nice little touch and something mm -hmm. I didn't realize until I was getting ready for doing this series. So there you go. I so we'll have Sao Sao. <laughs> So I have Sao, so I'll probably mess with this later on. And I have Chen Gon, because Chen Gon was an absolute legend in the Free Kingdoms 2010 TV series. What a guy. Oh um, and dislike officers, again, like if it's office, if it's basically you can use this to try and influence. If you want to join a particular force, you can use this to influence sort of what forces you do and don't want to join. So forces that I wouldn't necessarily want to join is like, uh, you know, rebels and evil people. And also people that are jerks, like say, uh, where oh, is Don't he? do it. I'm doing it. I'm doing oh. it. You can't stop me. Yang Song, you suck balls. Also, one of the worst characters in the game, but he still sucks. Oh, come on. That's a great stat pool. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of stat pools, stat pools. So, um, so this is the most important screen of your character in the game, and I would certainly encourage you guys to make sure you set this decently well, otherwise we are not responsible for what may happen to your character. Mm -hmm. So, I'll start off at the top here. So base ability. So um, all characters in the game have five ability fields which affect a variety of things in the game. You have a leadership, um, which affects everything from your ability to sort of command units in the field, um, your influence uh, in cities for doing bits and pieces like that. Um, there there's, might be some other things as well. This is all generalized, um, but they will, they will affect various bits and pieces. Uh, your war ability, which basically affects how good of a fighter you are in combat. Your intelligence value, um, which affects um, how effective you are, perhaps at uh, you know using strategies in the field, trying to confuse and bamboozle your opponents, also affects how effective you are at creating items and weaponry as such in cities. Oh, war also allows you to train troops better. That is true. Yes, it helps you to obviously better. You're a better warrior, so you've got a more chance of yeah you know, being able to train your troops to a higher standard. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got politics, um, which affects the obvious, i.e., how your dealings are with other forces. If you're sent on like uh, diplomacy missions and like uh, the like, um, it also affects how effective you are at actually building up cities, uh, which is pretty important early game um, because if you've got to sit around as a force and spend forever building forces, as I'm thinking of my co-commentator, that's <laughs> going to suck quite a lot. Um, so plus is quite useful. And then you've got charisma, which is probably overall the least important of the five stats, um, but does affect stuff like um it's I, I, I major. It's debatable, but it's still pretty important. It affects you know how how effective you are at you know dealing with other people's uh, you know relations. Also heavily impacts how effective you are at actually recruiting troops inside of Tissies, which is pretty damn important in this game. Um, so you can debate either way. Um, but One what you're going to be? Oh, go sorry. On. No, go on. One more thing to add as well is uh, the politics and charisma combined can encourage other officers to come to your own force. Yes, I forgot about this as well. But yes, they can influence not only finding them but them finding you as well. Connections, mm -hmm. not who you know. It's no, it is who you know, not what you know. I've totally bollocks that up. I'll have to try and edit that, hopefully, in both stream. Moving on. So, um, so uh, this is how it's going to work here, folks. You are going to have a total of 350 points to allocate, which is the you know decent end of things. Um, I mean, like, the weakest character you saw has got about 100. Uh, the best characters in the game have about 430-odd points, um, which I think actually is Sao Sao. I think he's actually overall the best character in the game. You might be right there, yeah. Um, he's got like 434 or something so um, 100 yeah. leadership as well so he's, got, he's got like 98 or something it's probably uh. pretty absurd so you're going to have 350 points total to allocate however no ability is allowed to exceed more than 90 points uh, the reason for this is simple um, you can increase your abilities um, beyond its initial threshold by um, having particular ranks in the forces which can increase stuff like your leadership your political ability you can also get hold of items as well which can improve stuff like your war if you get a decent weapon your intelligence if you get hold of, like some rare text stuff like that mm -hmm. um, and other things can be used to influence your abilities beyond 
Also, it seems absurd for like a young 15 year old to be able to out dueling Lu Bu, you know, having basically come out of the womb. It's kind of absurd. <laughs> so that's basically how it is. So 350 points, you've got a max of 90. You can allocate the points however you want within those boundaries. So for my Mr. Liang Yu, I have got it set up as so. I should probably type this in, it'd be a bit quicker. So he got 74 leadership. He's got 58 war because this guy's not, you know, he's, his fighting is not his forte. He, he can fight, but he's not. 58's not, not great. Um, 85 intelligence because that's where his uh, that's where his bread is being buttered. 72 pole, which is pretty decent. And 61 charisma, which is about average. It's about average-ish, I would rage her. But either way, these characters are still going to be, you know, upper echelons of the game, but not world beaters immediately. But they can be made into that. <laughs> so, next up, uh, growth period is going to be normal, unless you really, really want it to be precocious or late bloomer, uh, in which case, sure, I don't mind. Basically affects um, your character's peak abilities, which will, which will change as the game goes. So, for, generally for normal, in your 20s and 30s, you're going to be at your best and your highest stats. But uh, once you go beyond that, you start getting older and older, you are going to start deteriorating as a character. So you should be looking to mix this up uh, and pair it up with your birth year. Uh, make sure to try and put those two together quite nicely. Uh, ability persistence is going to be long because everyone chooses long. I don't even know why short's an, an option. Choose long. Just choose long. <laughs> right. Next up is aptitude. So uh, there are different unit types in the game. Uh, you have got five different types for land combat. You've got spears, pikes, and bows, which work as like a rock, paper, scissors formation between them. You've got uh, cavalry as Oh no, spears, pikes, and cavalry is the rock. That's pieces, right, yeah. My apologies. You've got bows for range, uh, you've got siege weaponry, and you've also got naval ability, which does come up depending obviously on where your character turns up, but some some parts of the world have significantly more water than others. And just uh, so people know, these are all as important as each other. Though, it, yes, it can depend on your situation, as Shadow mentioned, with navy, obviously, but yeah. I mean, a good naval officer is worth its weight in gold if you're on the right force. Um, why do you think, Wu, you know, with Wu and Sensei, absolutely just demolishes everything yeah, around yeah. the waters? Because they're the best. They are <laughs> undisputed kings of that. So, um, this is how it's going to work with aptitude. Um, obviously, the higher ability you have increases the amount of damage you can do as said unit. You've got access to more abilities as well as said unit. Um, which is pretty cool as well. Um, anything being onwards allows you to be able to do something special with the unit up to S, which allows you to basically just, you know, pretty, pretty awesome at what they do. So, uh, what you're going to have to do in this is the following. You're going to allow, uh, be allowed one S aptitude for any of the six that you wish, which is the best in the game. Like, without none, totally peerless, and just, like, absolutely kicking ass with that type of unit type. Uh, you're gonna have allowed one A type, which is still very strong. Not that, not all that many characters have an A type or multiples by any stretch of imagination. Very few That's actually true. have S's. Very few have S's, so it's pretty nice. Uh, you allowed two B's, which allows you some ability, and then two C's, which means you're not. It's not really your favourite sort of thing, but you know, units tend to have more than one officer um, to allow kind of mix up of abilities and that. So, um, so for my character example, I'm gonna have an S class in cavalry. We have an A class in spears, and a B class in bows and siege weaponry, which means that I'm going to have a C class in navy, because it's just not really my thing, and I'm going to have a C class in pikes, so that I control CM3. That's another thing about weaponry before we move on. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't just classify as the siege weaponry, which gets better, it's also the defensive weaponry. So oh, it comes it? in, yeah, yeah. But there is the defensive, like arch towers. If you mm. know what I mean by those, yeah, 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 yeah. It affects those as well. I don't know that. What if you're nearby them when they're being used? Oh no, no, no. I mean, the oh, you can actually build defensive towers onto your unit. Uh, that is another type of so it, it's classified as siege weaponry, but it can be used as a defensive mechanism as well. Whereas, oh. of course, the siege rams themselves, they can't actually be used as a defensive weapon oh so, no of course um, not. yeah weaponry can also favor defense as well yeah oh there we go though things i didn't know <laughs> good stuff right okay so next up is going to be skills so most characters in the game not all but most characters in the game have a skill that is unique to their individual um now 
this is a pretty big list so we are going to show you all of them uh, the abilities here and they have everything you could imagine from like ignoring zone of control of enemy units on land to like uh, restoring uh unit morale based on enemy defeat all way stuff just like the more political stuff so like um uh, cheaper weaponry more money per per month and stuff like that you know lots and lots of cool stuff here um, and you're going to be allowed all of the abilities that are over on the page, apart from four which are going to be banned because they're kind of ridiculous, um, which is unfortunate. So we'll show you who's down. Um, hopefully Alonzo has the list of what is to be banned. Right, first one is Majesty. Which is this one here, because Sweep Asunder is good enough as it is. You don't need Majesty. Like, that's Ooh. like, like, Zhang Liao's got that, and he's Zhang Liao, so he's, he gets to be unique. The next one is Valiant General which is further down as we get through here. So there's all sorts of things here. So technique points and defeating units, stealing items, trying to capture people, uh, stronger attacks. Uh, here's Valiant General down here. Um, it's it's pretty OP to put things yeah. behind. Like, all <laughs> attacks stronger versus weak unit, like, come on. Mm -hmm. The final one, oh, sorry, the next one, not the final one, is Divine Right. Which is down here, stronger spear and fight. Spear and fight. Again, it's pretty damn OP. Having one of these is usually enough. Having two kind of absurd uh, it's a bit too far yeah and then finally the one that we struggle to pronounce um as and have many pronunciation pronunciations of as uh pedog which is a bit further <laughs> down here so again you've got like immunity to like strategies um successful like guaranteed uh strategies against weak units stuff like that uh why is this not scrolling down Please scroll down. Fine, I'll do it this way. Fine, so be it. <laughs> so go down here. Uh, here's the one, the other one here. Domestics here. Half research cost. Um, again, it's a bit ridiculous uh, to put things mildly. Techniques aren't that expensive, anyways. But like oh. some of the later ones, it's kind of crazy. So we're gonna say not that we're gonna have anything else on in this game other than that, which is pretty good. And they say there's some really nice abilities still on the house you know like all the divine abilities that are left are pretty good and lister is like one of my favorite in the game um because having a officer of you a lister early game is just so good like mm -hmm. just you just pull officers like so damn quickly early game that makes a massive difference uh but my guy i'm gonna have is going to have uh whatever ability it is where is it uh, intensify is the one I'm going to use, uh, which makes that strategies are stronger if they're successful, but obviously have to be successful first. But bear in mind, my guy's got a pretty decent intelligence. You know, pair up your abilities. It makes sense. Uh, last thing up then is your character settings, which probably yeah, has some impact on the game. We'll go from here. Uh, so you have got four different character types, um, which does affect things like if your character gets drawn into debates and bits and pieces like that. Um, but a lot of this is kind of more flavor. Um, so, hey ho. Uh, so, you've got uh, timid, you've got cool, you've got bold, you've got reckless. Um, again, this will have impacts on like more direct things that your um, officer deals in. Um, but for the most part, probably won't come up over the course of the game. That'd be cool if it does. Um, but again, it's your character building, so you probably know the kind of character that you're going to have at this point. So, you should be using it fine. Go with your gut on this. So, my character is going to be pretty cool. Um, there are also different voices. The voices are in Chinese in this game. Um, so I'll play a few some samples of these. You've got Timid. Hopefully this will be loud enough. What is he saying? Uh, God, who knows? Something, something, I think he's ordering dinner. Um, so we've got Timid. You've got Cool. Would you say something different, please? <laughs> Thank there you. We there we go. So you got bold. So more of your warrior type, as I totally speak over it. And then you've got reckless, which is like your crazy barbs, you know, that sort of thing. Quite good. I, I quite like red. It's pretty good. But we're going to be cool. It makes no sense. Uh, you've got tone. Um, this is kind of a minor one, uh, mainly. Uh, this basically affects how your character speaks in text boxes. Uh, down here and how it kind of relates to other characters. It's it's a minor thing. It's kind of flavor, um, but it's there you go. You've got many things here from you know your kind of courteous to sort of your more warriors to Zhang Fei. Mm. Yeah, Zhang Fei is a thing here, folks. Um, should we know would if you, this? Let's go would you describe yourself as having a Zhang Fei tone? Only on a bad day. Only on a bad day. Only on a bad day. 
Uh, should be noted that these options are a bit different if you have a female officer. I'll show those off in two moments. Uh, we're gonna be uh, gonna be humble. Lends a modest, humble tone. Uh, court aspirations. Now, this is actually reasonably important for the purpose of the game because the court is in play in this uh, scenario we're gonna be doing. So. For those of you who aren't too familiar with the whole uh, premise of the game, we'll go into the actual main game itself, a bit of background as to what the hell is going on. But basically, uh, China's been ruled by the ruling Han Empire for about 400 years, but is basically crumbling um, apart uh, before everyone's eyes. Uh, a lot of regional world rules are around and all sort of seek dominion over the land, but they have different ideas about what they want to do with China. Some are interested in, like, trying to restore the imperial court, like Liu Bei, probably like Gongsun Zan, Yuan Shao, maybe, kind of, probably not. Um... <laughs> But uh, there are others that perhaps are more tyrannical and basically want to become emperor themselves. Um, so they couldn't give two dams of what happens to the Han, and they'll probably dethrone him at the first chance. Now, the impact that this will have is that if you have someone, for example, who um, thinks that the, the rest restoration of the Han is important, and you're on a force to someone who doesn't care, and he takes over the emperor and decides to basically kill him, you're probably going to leave his force. And vice versa as well. If you couldn't care less of it and your force takes over the Han and like he decides, no, we must respect the Emperor. He must stay and rule the world. You're probably not going to be too impressed as well. Um, so, But if you're on a force which which um, agrees with your fields and they act in a certain way, it will actually improve your loyalty with said force, which is a nice little thing. You can just choose normal, so you're basically not really affected either way. Uh, but if you do pick one or the other, um, you may end up leaving forces depending on what happens. It's, um, it's noted. Also, like if the force leader dies and the person who takes over who couldn't give a damn for the harm, but you do, you may end up leaving as well. So... Um, Treat with caution, uh, but uh, my guy, I'm pretty sure, is on normal. He is on normal, so that's fine. And then lastly, well, well second to last, I should say, is uh, aspiration. So this will affect how your character acts as AI. Um, because of the nature of the game and all the officers are going to be basically randomly sent into the world, um, the majority of them, especially early on in the game, are going to be controlled by enemy forces um, that are not ours. And that means that there's a, like a sort of a, an AI algorithm which will kind of affect a bit of how they tend to, um, how they act across the map. Especially if they end up becoming a force ruler. This has a massive effect on how they tend to try and basically rule the world. So from military, basically just trying to crush people through forces to um, self. So it doesn't really want to get into alliances. Goodly, trying to make sure that people are happy and ready to go. Um, you know, you've got like a career, you know, trying to protect the people. Um, eminent, basically being really rich. Uh, secure, doesn't really want to get into wars, and retiring, which is basically sod everyone, I'm the only one that's important, look at me, I'm great, <laughs> I'm going to be rich and powerful, you can all go die, basically. Um, so once the character becomes under your control, it doesn't really matter what you choose here for aspirations, because you actually control them, but as AI, this can have a kind of quite an important little impact behind the scenes, even if you don't see it happening. It can have a thing. So, but again, it's, you should probably know the sort of character you want at this point. So, my guy is going to be a careerist. Um, and then, lastly, a bio. If you want to put in a bio, um, totally optional. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you can uh, have a bio if you want. Um, and you can fill up the entire box here, actually. But more, no more than a few lines is really necessary. Um, so, go for it. If you want to put in some flavor text, go for it. We'll whack it in. That's not an issue at all. Um, that's pretty much everything for this. Uh, if you want to make a female character, let me just quickly show off the differences for this. So we'll go with, uh, let's change a face. Let's pick uh, you. Yes, you. Is Beautiful. that a hat? Uh, it, yeah, it is. It is. It's got stream it rounds. Uh, it's yeah. that or a shield, I suppose, but it looks more straw to me. One or the other, either way. So if you do choose a female character, there are a couple of differences in here. Uh, there's only two voice types, which is unfortunate. So you basically got Call, which is basically more political and bold, which is more, you know, warrior-like. But I'll play in both anyway. So here's Call. Very cute and adorable. And we've got Bold, which is probably less cute and less adorable. Well, I say that. Whichever one you want, but there you go. That's what kind of woman you're into, yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, sorry. Um, so, and then we've got Tone. Uh, there's only five of them. Unfortunately, you cannot be a female Zhang Fei. Apparently, it's not allowed. I don't know why, but it's not. It's just 
Those are the rules, folks. Those are the rules. Goes um, my character creation out the window. Indeed, I apologise. But, um, but other than that, um, everything else is exactly the same. There are no differences whatsoever. They're the only two things you need to just bear in mind. But other than that, character creation for females is exactly the same as males, which is nice because usually, like, say, XCOM, I have to do two completely bloody different videos on it. It's a pain uh, in the ass. Nightmare. <laughs> Pain in the ass. But I think that's pretty much everything for um, Officer Creation that I can think of. It's pretty detailed, pretty much everything. Um, again, there will be a template for you to use in the comment section uh, or in the Discord server um, that you can use for um, entering your details. If you don't wish to use it and just want to give a general overview, again, you can do that and we will put something together for you, depending on obviously what you've set. That's but right. Obviously, you know. You put in a little effort, and then you just got to kind of go with the RNG, and it may not be kind, because it's not under your control, so just a warning. I've got a couple of footnotes here as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being about the character design that you're doing. There is no real right answer. There is nothing really that's particularly better, per se, um, other than maybe making things that, you know, attributing things with other things to kind of complement them, so to speak, in regards to, say, the you know, the aptitudes and the abilities and things like that. But, um, yeah, it's more of the case of how the person who is controlling you, be it AI or be it one of us, utilizes you at the end of the day. Because there is a, you know, there's so many ways to make use of various officers. Mm. Um, oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So I was just messing about with just like other things while you were chatting away, sorry. <laughs> oh, it's, it's okay. Uh, so the other thing as well I wanted to mention is um, in regards to death, we completely forgot to t make a point of the fact you can die before your expiry date, as I shall put it. Mm, um, yes, this is, this is your natural, na rough natural cause date. Even this isn't yes. exactly specific. There's a bit of variance on it, yes. but you can definitely die. Yeah, and that applies also if you're controlled by an AI. Mm-hmm not yeah. just if you're one of our officers or something down yeah, like there is, is all the chance you could die um but uh mo it, it, providing you're not within a force you are pretty safe but yeah there are many ways in which an officer can die outside of just expiring yeah um you can you, know, you can be wounded in duels you can be killed in duels you can, you can be executed be by to forces <laughs> be burned to death um yeah there, there there are some pretty harrowing ways you can potentially die in this game some are pretty epic um but it's Ooh. not impossible especially with like the forces um you know if you get captured by enemy force and you decide yeah, right. that you're not going to join them they might just decide to straight execute you it's mm -hmm. kind of unusual for the ai to do that they tend not to i tend unusual to unusual for the ai not so unusual for me <laughs> yeah there's a warning for you folks there's a warning <laughs> Anyway, so that's pretty much everything for the character creation there. I think that's covered all the bases. If there's anything we have missed uh, or any questions you have, of course, do ask them in the comment section. We will respond to them uh, as accurately as we can because um, mm -hmm. this is usually something that ends up getting missed, but that is going to be basically it. Uh, this video will be left up for one whole week. So if we say this will be running until, we'll say, next Sunday or Sunday the 20th. As I'm hoping my co to looks at the calendar. Oh, I go on, sorry. Because I'm in full screen mode. <laughs> 26. The 26. So if we wow, call it, you know say, that? roughly. So. <laughs> so if we say well, this will be run from running until the end of Sunday, 26, gives you a whole week to put in your video, uh, put in your offices for that. Uh, we'll then spend basically the weekend putting those all together for us to begin recording probably some point uh, at the very end of January. Uh, to get so the series will probably be up and running probably like the very start of February at a rough rough guesstimate. Sounds about right. Yep. Sounds about right. Good mm -hmm. stuff. All right then, folks. I hope you have uh, enjoyed and not been overly confused. Uh, my voice is actually surprisingly hurting. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Again, any questions, do feel free to ask. We'll answer as we can. Um, but other than that, uh, I've been Max Shadow. He's been Alonzo Ryan. Mm -hmm. And uh, we shall see you all very very soon. Yeah, looking forward to your submissions. Take care, folks. Take care.